Good morning in this week's block news. Two big updates to Gutenberg are rolled out. Contact Form 7 gets blockified. The awesome icon block gets even more awesome. And did Matt Mullenweg just announce the death of WordPress themes? Let's get newsy. Time for block news. It's news about blocks. Since my last update before Christmas, there's been two updates to Gutenberg 14.8 and 14.9. I will put links in the description below to full explanations of what exactly is in each one. I just want to show you some of the highlights as far as I'm concerned. The first one in 14.8, which came out in December, late December, is a new reorganized site editor interface. You can see it here. I'm just going to play this little video for you so you can actually see it. So now we have a clearer separation of the templates from the editing process. You see here you can actually click on the templates and then you have to click on edit to actually go in to edit them. It's one more click, but actually it makes it much clearer as far as I can see. And this is how you add your new template. So it's now starting to consolidate all the options over on the left-hand panel, which gets a big thumbs up from me. 14.8 also introduces a brand new feature called the style book. This is a really cool feature that lets you see the styles of all your core blocks. Let me just play this little video to show you how this one works. Uh, so all you do, and you have to be using a block theme to be able to use this functionality, but when you're in the site editor, you have this little icon in the top right of your screen up here. And when you click on that, you'll see a preview of all the core blocks that your site is using. And as you make changes to them, we're just clicking on some style variations over here on the right. You'll see how the core blocks are also changing. So this is great. This consolidates one place where you can see all the styles for all your core blocks. The style book also gives you the opportunity to view the styles of individual blocks as you change them in the global style settings. A long asked for feature has been the ability to easily add custom CSS to Gutenberg. And now you can do this. You have to be using the Gutenberg plugin and you have to go to Gutenberg experiments in the settings panel in Gutenberg and tick global styles custom CSS checkbox. And here's a video of what it looks like. This will be rolled into core, hopefully fairly soon. You'll see here on the video, you just click on custom down here in the bottom right, and then you can add your custom CSS. Gutenberg 14.9 came out just a few days ago. And the most exciting feature of this is the ability to make changes in the site editor and then push them with one click to your global stars. So for example, in this case, I can make a change to my enormous button here. Let's make a quick change. I'm just going to change the background color. And also let's change the size. Now let's add, a, let's add a radius to this. And now once I made that change, I can come down here to advanced in the bottom right, click on that and you'll see this brand new button that says push changes to global stars. You click on that and that basically saves all those changes to your global stars. So that now that any buttons you create will inherit that new style, which is fantastic. So you don't have to go to the global stars to make these changes. You can do it in situ and push them to the global stars. According to WordPress.org, Contact Form 7 is the most popular WordPress plugin with over 5 million active installations. It lets you add a contact form to your website and it has now been blockified by my good friend Munir Kamal, who is a fantastic developer. I will link to the full article on this, which features in WP Tavern, but essentially Munir has blockified it. Here is the old Contact Form 7 interface and here is the new Gutenberg interface. And this comes with a number of advantages. For example, you can now drag and drop fields around. You can customize fields more easily and you can also transform fields into other fields. So it's altogether a nicer place to work with Contact Form 7 and it's also completely free. My favorite icon block by Nick Diego got a nice update a few days ago. It's now been downloaded 7,000 times, so it's clearly doing very well. It's got two really nice things that I just want to point out here. We've got now improved width control and actually also height support as well, which is fantastic. The other cool thing that I wanted to show you quickly is it now has better support for global stars. So if you make a change globally, then the icon block inherits those global stars. You can see here on this video, that the user is making some changes. What they're actually doing is changing the style variations of the theme over here on the right. And you can see this is the icon block in the middle here, how it's automatically changing and inheriting the styles that are made here. So you don't have to go back through every icon and change it. You can change it in one place and the icon block will now inherit the style changes that you make globally. Matt Mullenweg gave his annual State of the Word speech just before Christmas in New York. And there was one passage that I really want to draw out and draw your attention to in which he talked about the ability now to create your own themes using the block editor. First, let me play the passage. Let's talk about the last bit of phase two, and then I'm going to briefly mention phase threes and four. Threeses? Three? <laughs> This is a speed run. It takes about 55 seconds, but it's sped up like three times of an entire theme being created just with the Gutenberg blocks. 
So you can watch how this starts from like a completely blank canvas. And very quickly, using color tools, primary colors, secondary colors, um, we're going to have some palettes. The typography is changing. We just changed the fonts. Um, some spacing that's going on here. And this is going to be fully responsive, so we'll see that go through as well. Add some blocks. And this is finally like changing some of the spacing to make it like a little bit cooler. That on the right is actually the navigation, so that's a menu where it says work, studies, bio. Finally editing the permalink pages. And done. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> So that went from blank to theme. And this is using a new theme for WordPress. Might be one of the last themes for WordPress called the Create Block Theme. Um, the Create Block Theme basically gives, if you're making something brand new, like a blank canvas to start from, also with some cool features. So for example, if you're using Google Fonts, it can actually import those to be served locally from your site. So I know there's concerns in Europe and other places around like GDPR and what, using Google hosted resources for things. So this allows you to run it all from your own website, yet still have the rich typography and other things that we all want in modern web design. So it can have one theme, one pattern, but infinite permutations. Um, these are some examples of um, different kind of styles applied to just one thing. So what Matt is actually talking about here is the ability to use Gutenberg and the core blocks with a standard theme like the 2023 theme to design any kind of design you like just using the full site editor. And indeed, if you subscribe to this channel, hit subscribe below, you'll see that I've taken some famous sites and redesigned them using just the 23 theme, 2023 theme and Gutenberg blocks. So again, this brings into the question, what will WordPress themes look like in a year, two years time? Do we need thousands of WordPress themes? Let's refer back to what Matt just said. That went from Blake to theme, and this is using a new theme for WordPress might be one of the last themes for WordPress called the Create Block Theme. It might be one of the last WordPress themes, that's what Matt just said, and he's the driving force behind WordPress and the Gutenberg project. Do WordPress believe there is a future for themes going forward? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm gonna be covering this in much more detail and giving you my thoughts on this in a future video in the next few weeks, so hit subscribe if you wanna see that video. As you probably know, if you follow this channel, I like to keep my BDI on the latest Gutenberg reviews, and here they are. And you can see it's very divisive and conflicted again. All we have are either one-star reviews or five-star reviews. There is no nuance left on the internet anywhere. You either hate things or you love things these days. And what we also like to do on this channel is every time we do one of these updates, by the magic of AI, we get the great Alan Rickman to read the latest Gutenberg review. Very bad. This plugin represents what is wrong with WordPress. Most of my clients don't know much about the internet, and the arrival of Gutenberg completely lost them. It would be time for WordPress to step back and abandon this gas factory that is Gutenberg. Thank you, Cromerweb, for that negative review. And also thank you very much to Alan Rickman for that fantastic reading. Thank you for watching. If you want to see more updates about Gutenberg and WordPress, hit that subscribe button now. And also, if you can hit the like button, it would be amazing because it really, really, really does help spread the word of the channel. And also, every time you do hit that like button, our cats, who had a great Christmas, by the way, get a little treat. <laughs>